Hey, it's Joe Ferret with Geek Toolkit. Today we're going to talk about the Home Assistant Community Store. This is episode five in my series about Home Assistant, and this one will really help fill out all of the things like missing integrations. Let me show you an example. So if I click here and I look for Blue Iris on the Home Assistant integration page, there's nothing there. In this Home Assistant Community Store, however, if I click on integrations and say add, I can search for Blue Iris, and there it is there's an integration that I can pull in. Now, how does this work? Well, when we pull in this Home Assistant Community Store, we're pulling in a ability to connect to third-party repositories. A repository is basically where code is stored or projects are stored on what's called GitHub. So this connects us to those and presents them as a store that makes it very, very easy to basically click and then install. And then we've got expanded functionality. This also gives us the ability to do themes. For instance, Home Assistant typically looks like this by default. However, I could make it look like this, or like this, or like this. These are a number of themes that are very easy to install, and they're very simple to basically select, and then have your entire experience be colored or themed the way you'd want it to look. This can really enhance the look of your dashboard and make things look a lot more appealing. I'll show you all of that and more in this Home Assistant tutorial, part five, hacks and themes. Okay, let's get the party started. This is going to be very simple and straightforward to get this installed. The first thing you want to do is go to GitHub. When you go to github.com, and I'll put all these links down in the description, you're going to click on sign up, which will take you here. Go ahead and fill out your standard account stuff where you give it your username and email, and they'll send you a uh, basically an email verification. You go through that, and once you have a GitHub account, you'll be ready to move on. We need this because it uses GitHub to access what are called the repositories, which is where all the code is stored that we want to get access to. This here is the Home Assistant Community Store web page, and this is part of their installation. Now this will talk about the different types of installs based on what you've got for Home Assistant. You can see that they've got a script that does most of it for us. So we're gonna just copy that script there. Again, I'll put that down in the comments as well. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is what's called SSH, which is a remote terminal, or basically a remote way to enter a command on Home Assistant. Now I think I've talked about how to install this before, but if not, Quick refresher, we're gonna go down here to Supervisor and then we'll go up to Add-on Store. We'll start search for SSH, click on this and then click Install, which will be here in the lower left. Mine's installed, I'll give you a quick peek at my configuration. It's very basic. Once you have that, make sure you click Start so that you've got it running and then you can click Open Web UI. Now we're gonna paste the basically the quick install here. This is what it looks like. It's a wget, which does an HTTP request out to this URL here, and then it's gonna pipe that to bash and execute it. Okay, once we've done that, we have it successfully installed. We are going to restart Home Assistant. So let's see, we'll go down to configuration, we'll go to my server controls, and I will say restart. Okay, when you're back in the UI, the next thing we're gonna do is get the integration installed. Now it's not an add-on, it is an integration, so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go down to configuration, integrations, Remember, we're gonna to go to add integration here and type hacks. There it is right there, we're gonna bring that in. This is important to understand that these are untested in home, by the Home Assistant team. The Home Assistant team and the hacks group are separate and that hacks is like a store for a bunch of developers and that stuff is not necessarily tested. So that is an important distinction to understand between the Home Assistant stuff, which is supported by their team. So the next portion of this, we're going to actually do the authentication. So I'm going to click here. It says enter the code displayed on your device. Now that code is actually down here. So I'm going to copy this, put it into here. See if I can just paste it in, say continue. And then this is going to authenticate hacks for my thing. And then we should go here and this should automatically continue. I don't need to give it an area. We'll click finish and there is hacks right there. Now that the integration is installed, you see it show up over here in the side panel. This here, click over here. And this is important. It says hacks is starting up. This first time is going to take an hour. So I'm actually going to stop the video and come back tomorrow. And this should all be downloaded. It takes a while and it's rate limited off of GitHub to pull that much information down. So that's why it takes so long. We'll give it a while and come back later. Okay, at this point, you should be at this state where you 
have waited an hour and everything is ready to go. I let mine sit overnight, as I said. These are the two main areas that we want to focus on, integrations and front end, and we'll go through them one by one. Integrations are just like Home Assistant integrations. However, these are ones that have not, they're not actually shipping with Home Assistant. They may not be looking to move into Home Assistant, so sometimes this is the only way to get these to work. A lot of these integrations, what you can do is these are equivalent of cloning the repository into your custom components. The hack store just makes that whole process simpler and a lot more automated for you. So you've got beautiful, basically very much like the add-on store. It's an integration store. You can click on what you want to look at here. And this will typically open up a sample of the GitHub page that has a sample of the images and the YAML if it's required or any other modifications and talks about what that add-on is. See, there's just quite a few here. Just want to go through and give people a, a sample. One of the things when I would watch these hacks tutorials, I wish they would just kind of go through so I could see, is there anything in there that I'd really want or like what kind of ideas are in there? So this really gives you a bit of a view of it. Okay, so those are integrations and you can see there's quite a bit, which is why I wanted to cover this in this video because this really gives me a way to branch out to a lot of cool stuff in the future. Let's talk about front end. Now front end is going to be the Lovelace cards. Remember Lovelace is your user interface. These are your cards right here. So when we talk about being able to add to Lovelace, that is incredibly powerful. We can make that look really cool. So if I click on front end, click down here in the lower right for explore. Now we have things that are like themes that can change the whole look, or we have things that will change just a card. Okay. So for instance, let's check out mini media player here. And here's some samples of what that media player can look like. It's very cool, very slick. And here's a little feature list of it. So that's just one custom card that you could have in your Lovelace UI. The other thing you can do is themes and you can search right off the top here. So if I do something like this and click, this is a theme. This can make Home Assistant look like that by installing that theme. We're going to actually install a theme in this video just to kind of show what that looks like in the end. Okay, let's talk about how to get themes going in Home Assistant. The first thing we have to do is actually add a line to our YAML. So we're gonna to go to our file editor here. And right here, I'm gonna add this line. So we're adding front end colon, and then below it, themes colon, include dir merge named themes. And I'll put this in the description, of course. We're gonna save that. The next thing we're gonna do is go to hacks, we only have to do that once. Once that's in, we can install all sorts of themes here. We're going to say explore, and I'm going to install a theme called Noctis. Noctis. We'll install this one here. So lower right, just install this theme. I want the 2.5. That's the latest version. That sounds good. And while I'm at it, I'm going to install one other theme. Let's get that Synthwave theme. That looks pretty fancy. So we'll take a look. Yeah, this one here. Let's get this one. Okay, and so now I've got two themes installed, and since I edited the YAML, we have to restart anyway. So we're going to go to configuration, and then we'll go to server controls, and restart, and I'll be right back. Okay, and we've rebooted, and I added some just random stuff here from my phone and uh, a printer and such, just to have some elements here to show what the theme looks like. So to actually set the theme, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the user name here. So this is Joe Farrow from me. And then here under theme, it says backend selected, but we're going to select Noctis. And you see this actually themes everything here. The hacks UI is themed. My overview, everything got themed here with fonts and colors and so on. Even my little charts here are different now. Let's try the another theme. Let's try Synthwave here. We'll just select it there. And I've got that cool purple, a bit of a trippier theme. I like this too. So that's it. That's as simple as it is for changing themes. Okay, that's all I have for this episode of Geek Toolkit. Installing hacks I think is incredibly powerful and I think it's a really missing element that without it you're missing half of the power of Home Assistant because there's so many integrations that are available that haven't quite made it in yet that this enables. Also some of the things like browser mod really enable some cool scenarios when we get deeper into things like advanced camera scenarios and so on like that. And then also being able to access things like DeepStack very easily really enables things like smart camera um, automation. Being able to do the themes in the custom cards really enables a lot of very powerful customized scenarios for how things look and how you arrange them, including things like animated weather icons and so on. So 
want to thank you for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit, and that's all I have for now.